stage two, as I mentioned, is where the WCS information gets attached. And so JWST WCS is a little bit different and it's worth taking a little bit more time to look into it. So let's talk about the WCS. So the WCS information and distortion models are provided by the um, instrument and detector specific calibration reference files. And so in the assigned WCS step um, that I mentioned here, that's the first step of stage two processing. It doesn't actually modify anything, but it just attaches a WCS object to that exposure. Stage three is what actually uses that information. And so the WCS object that gets attached is what transforms the positions in the detector frame to the world coordinate frame. The difference for, uh, for JWST is that it uses the generalized world coordinate system rather than the FITS WCS standard. So some of you may be used to the FITS WCS standard. Um, that only provides the instructions for relating pixel to world, but the generalized world coordinate system, the GWCS, will actually give you the whole transform. Um, and so the forward direction of the transforms takes you from detector to world coordinates. Um, in some cases, there may be intermediate frames as well, um, for instance, for GRISM data. Um, but all of that information is stored in um, the .meta .wcs part of your data model. So the whole transform is in the WCS array. However, in order to let you display your JWST files in software like DS9, um, which needs specific WCS information, the pipeline uses a SIP-based approximation to the WCS. Um, so it fits the um, SIP approximation, and you get the standard FITS keywords that get stored in WCS info. Um, so it's not an exact fit, but it's accurate to a quarter of a pixel. Um, and then separately, if you want to modify those parameters on your own, um, using your own downloaded version of the pipeline, you can always adjust the parameters or you can turn that off manually. Um, they'll discuss that more in the pipeline webinars, how to modify different steps. Let's take a look at the WCS info for our image. You can see you have the whole transform here. How does this compare to the FIT standard? So we'll say image fits to WCS. Function get fits WCS. So here you can see the SIP approximation. These are also, you can grab these from the data model, as I mentioned. So the SIP approximation is contained in WCS info. And so you can get those values from there as well. So CR val one and two. You can also see which coordinate frames are available for you to um, play around with. Here for our image, we have detector V2, V3, which just relates the instrument frame to the JVST pointing, and then the world coordinate frame. What was the input frame for our data? See, it was detector and units of pixels. Alternately, output frame is world and units of degrees. If you want to get the information for a specific pixel, then, then right straight forward. But here's the part that you might find most useful. If you want to actually just get the transform itself, detector to world transform, stored for you in the WCS with get transform. Here we're going detector to world. Okay. This is now the full transform to go between those two coordinate systems. So let's get the array and the deck for our pixel using the transform. Out. You can see the array and the deck. 
And now let's get the inverse transform. Do the inverse transform to see if we recover our pixel. Here I'm using the RA in the deck I did when I was doing the transform in the opposite direction. So world to pixel. You can see 110, 110. That was our original pixel. There's um, a little bit of a difference. That's mainly due to um, the fact that these are um, ground distortion calibration files. Once we get on flight, hopefully we will be able to um, improve the round tripping for our transforms. And for spectral data, it's um, similar, though slightly different. So let's take a look at our wide field slitless exposure. Oh. Right. Litless exposure. You'll see here, now we have GRISM detector, detector V2, V3, and world. You can also see what the bounding box was. Bounding box is what's used to extract the trace in the image in order to fit the, um, to get a spectra. And so if you want to get the WCS, as we did before, time I'll show you how to do it for multiple pixels. They do. Here you can see RA, uh, both RAs, both decks, the wavelengths, and the spectral orders. And here, when you want to transform, here we'll say SS for slow low spectroscopy. Do detector here. Well, that's something different. Do the transform to switch to a different coordinate system. Bring our RA deck wavelength and order from above. Oh, sorry, it's probably a typo here. Every time using this transform, not the one I did shorter earlier for our image. So you can see here, these are the pixels and the wavelengths. Similarly, if you want to go in the opposite direction, Plug your values back in. Now we're back in world coordinates. So one thing you might notice here is that these pixels don't match these pixels. And that's because up here we discussed you have an extra intermediate coordinate frame. So that means that you would have to go through a different transform before you can get to the world coordinates. And we just wanted to highlight that for you.